Okay, so this is a 31-year-old gentleman um, who um, uh, sustained direct trauma to the right hand uh, nine days ago. Um, and he presents now with his problem. So once again, for the students, you start off with the patient, then the problem. The patient is a 31-year-old uh, unemployed gentleman, uh, otherwise uh, no comorbidities, uh, no past surgical or medical history, no allergies. Uh, nine days ago, he sustained direct trauma. He also had trauma to the lower limb, and that seemed to take priority, and therefore the right hand has been uh, neglected and or ignored for now. He presents now with his problem. What is his problem? His problem is a painful, stiff hand um, with a history, according to the referral doctor, of multiple fractures of the hand. So that's the history. Examination. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is look, feel, move. Uh, look, and it's important that the students trust their eyes. You don't have to look like a medical student, you just look like uh, anybody with uh, a, a reasonable amount of intelligence and, and observe what you see. So what do you see? If you look at it end on, just come from this angle, you can see that there's obvious swelling and deformity of this finger. Um, it appears to be have a bit of a concavity here, so it's bent backwards. Same goes with this one. If you look at it end on, you can see that this one is slightly angulated and possibly a bit rotated, but there's also marked swelling there's some linear uh, scarring, which could be from the dressings, I'm not sure. And there's a marked area of swelling and, and, uh, and displacement over there. So that's just on looking. If you look on the other side, there's a lot of bruising, but no open wounds. So that's look. When it comes to feeling, once again, what are we trying to feel? We're not trying to feel for warmth and uh, uh, yeah, abscesses, etc. This guy's been hit and he's now got a painful swollen hand. The likely, it, likely, likelihood is that he's got a multiple fractures. So we're going to examine him as per that. So when you feel, you're feeling for, to try and identify where the pain is and also the bony landmarks. Is this sore here? Okay, so it's a bit tender over there. Um, and if I palpate the metacarpal, I can feel a bony spike right over there. I don't know if you, it shows on the x-ray, but there's a bony spike implying that there's a, fra a fracture fragment. Take that thing off the hook. Just put it, take it on and off. Yeah. yeah. Just take it off. Um, there's a, 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 a bony fragment over there, and when I examine these, I can feel that there's uh, angulation of these these fractures, and that's really all you want to feel on this patient. You, you should also do a, a, a gross neurological examination to make sure that there's no neurological deficit and that the fingers are, are warm and uh, well perfused, which they are. So that's look, feel, and now we're going to ask him to move. It's always active and then passive. So make a fist for me. That's his full complement of his movement. Make a fist and open. That's his extension. Close. That's his flexion. Very stiff and very limited motion hand already. So we, uh, we, this hand's already in trouble. And then if you want, you can do passive motion, but it'll be too painful in this patient um, to try and move him uh, too much. So um, special investigations in orthopedics is almost always an x-ray. Occasionally we use ultrasound, MRIs, and other modalities. Uh, but here we've taken an x-ray, which is an AP and lateral view of his, uh, of his right hand. And the most obvious thing to find is uh, the uh, transverse fracture of the index metacarpal. So you can see that's the index metacarpal. It is transverse. It is a short oblique fracture. And then we look at the displacements. Remember, the, th four, the four displacements in all fractures is short, shift, tilt, twist. So is there shortening? Very minimal. Is there shift? About 50% shift. Is there tilt? Not really. And is there twist? Well, that's a clinical assessment, to be honest. So if you look at this fracture, it has a transverse fracture of the mid shaft of the proximal phalanx of the right middle finger. Um, it's a, as I say, transverse fracture, and there does not appear to be any displacement in this, but you have to see it always in two views. Here we got a fracture in the proximal third of the proximal phalanx of the right ring finger, uh, proximal phalanx. Once again, a transverse fracture, minimal shift, uh, no shortening, no tilt, and no rotation abnormality. But once again, we're only seeing it on this view. What is critically important is to always look at all fractures in two views. So here's the um, uh, fracture of the index metacarpal, and you can see it's grossly uh, displaced, it's angulated, that's the tilt. Remember, short, shift, tilt, twist. No shortening, uh, there's a bit of shift, it's only about 20% on this view, uh, but there's marked tilt, so it's volar tilt, dorsal angulation, uh, apex dorsal angulation, volar tilt, uh, and there's uh, 
difficult to see the rotation on this view. If you look at the two proximal phalanx fractures, that's the middle finger, that one there, which is the mid shaft, and you can see severe, nearly 90 degrees of, of uh, dorsal tilt, apex volar angulation, and then this one is the junction of the uh, proximal third and the middle third. Uh, you can see it's completely off-ended over here, uh, so it's 100% shift, and it's 90 degrees of, uh, of tilt in the dorsal direction severely uh, displaced and unacceptable positions for all three of these fractures and this will need uh, fixation. How exactly we fix it is a, is a difficult decision because uh, if we uh, just try and manipulate it, it would be very difficult to hold so we're going to have to do some form of internal fixation here. Uh, the plan is to actually go and do proper open reduction internal fixation of all three fractures and then rehabilitate this hand as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Thanks.